Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. Today we'll have a look at a very exciting study that showed skin cells from a 53-year-old being rejuvenated by 30 years, back to those of a 23-year-old. In the study, they used Yamanaka factors to transform the cells to a point where they had lost some of their identity, but then allowed them to move back to being skin cells again, only much younger. First a disclaimer, that in this video we are sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Here is the paper, Multiomic Rejuvenation of Human Cells by Maturation Phase Transient Reprogramming. We'll get into what they mean by maturation phase transient reprogramming in a minute. First, a quick overview of the paper. Aging happens at the organismal level with a reduction of fitness, but also at the cellular level, including reduced function, altered gene expression, and a perturbed epigenome. Cellular aging can be reversed by using the Yamanaka factors to convert the cell to an induced pluripotent stem cell, or IPCS. However, in this process, the cell identity is lost, and it may be difficult to reacquire. It has been shown that the epigenome is rejuvenated by the maturation phase, which implies that a full reversal of IPCS is not required. So in this study, they used a process that they called maturation phase transient reprogramming to partially reprogram the cells before withdrawing the reprogramming factors. They used skin cells from middle-aged donors, two age 53 and one age 38, and they saw that the cells would temporarily lose their skin cell identity, but then would be able to recover it. This process rejuvenated the cells by 30 years using a transcriptomic clock and saw similar results in methylation clocks, which is considerably more than previous transient reprogramming studies. They also saw improved collagen production and migration speed. Interestingly, there was a window of optimal time for reprogramming, beyond which there was not greater rejuvenation. In summary, they show it was possible to separate rejuvenation from complete pluripotent reprogramming, which could open the way for novel therapies. The process is called maturation phase transient reprogramming. So what is the maturation phase? Here is a diagram of the steps a cell goes through during reprogramming with the Yamanaka factors. Initially, there is the initiation phase where normal gene expression is repressed. This is where the previous reprogramming studies have been tried. Next is the maturation phase, which is where this study is focused, during which some of the pluripotent genes are expressed. And finally, the stabilization phase. The first two phases require continuous presence of the Yamanaka factors to continue. But once the stabilization phase is entered, the pluripotency becomes stable and independent of the external factors. In this study, they showed that it was possible to have a cell enter the maturation phase and then return to its original somatic form. In the study, they used all four Yamanaka factors, OPT4, KLF4, CMYK, and SOX2, which would be active only in the presence of doxycycline. Most of the age reduction in the epigenetic age happened in the first 20 days, though full reprogramming took 50 days. The study looked at the expression of genes related to fibroblasts and pluripotency and how these changed over time. During the reprogramming, the fibroblast specific gene expression was reduced and the pluripotent gene expression increased, but both returned to the baseline at the end. They developed a transcriptomic clock specific to skin cells. Very briefly, the transcriptome is the proteins which are actually being transcribed so expressed in the cell, and a transcriptomic clock is based on how these change over time. It could be viewed as more accurate than a methylation clock as it's looking at the expression of the genes rather than how they are methylated. After 10 and 13 days of reprogramming, they saw a large improvement of up to 30 years from the negative control. Interestingly, this was reduced after day 13, making days 10 to 13 the optimal window. Looking at more traditional epigenetic clocks, in this case, the Horvath 13 clock, they saw similar results at both the 10 to 13 day window and for longer periods. However, telomere length was not impacted and remained substantially the same. 
or epigenetic markers, they looked at H3K9ME3, which is a marker on the histones related to how DNA is packaged in the nucleus, with higher levels being associated with tighter packaging. As we get older, there is a lower level of H3K9ME3, and the DNA becomes more loosely controlled. We can see a partial recovery of this in the reprogrammed cells. They then looked at some phenotypic aspects of the cell. In this case, the levels of collagen 1 and 4. Skin cells produce collagen, which declines with age. They compared the levels of collagen in young cells to that in the reprogrammed cells, where we can see a partial recovery of the levels, which seems to be better after 10 days than 13. And they also looked at the migration speed, a measure of wound healing ability, where they saw variable results, but some improvement in the reprogrammed cells. In summary, the study showed that it's possible to substantially rejuvenate cells without getting into stable pluripotency, and so showing that it may be possible to separate rejuvenation from pluripotency. As they say, further studies are needed. It's worth noting that telomere lengths were not extended, and some way to ensure that no cells become pluripotent would be needed. But overall, this is very exciting in terms of being able to see cells rejuvenated by 30 years while still retaining their identity. It will be very interesting to see if this level of rejuvenation can be repeated in vivo.